Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to study something about the cooling systems that are used in internal combustion engines. As it is very well known that the source of energy in an internal combustion engine is by burning of fuel wherein chemical energy is converted into heat energy. Now as heat is released, there is a wide range of temperature that might be observed in an IC engine. This temperature ranges from 35 degrees Celsius minimum or a little bit less to as high as 3000 degrees Celsius during the cycle. Now we all know that the total amount of heat will never be converted into work. Some or the other amount of heat will get stored inside the IC engine itself. This heat is practically of no use to us and if it is left as it is inside the engine then it might cause a irreparable damage to the engine. If the engine is allowed to run without proper cooling then various components such as the walls of the combustion chamber, the piston cylinder arrangement they will assume whatever temperature or they will gain whatever temperature is being attained or the average of it throughout the combustion chamber. This temperature might very well be of a very very high order ranging anywhere between 1500 degrees Celsius. Now we can very well imagine that at such high temperatures the characteristics that the metal of these component, the characteristics that the metal of these components possesses it will change significantly so much so that these metals might expand and cause the seizure the total seizure of the engine theoretically we can say that if large amount of heat is generated and left as it is inside the engine then we can say or assume that the thermal efficiency of the engine will increase but this increase in thermal efficiency might be at the cost of the seizure of the engine okay so we need to remove this excess amount of heat the main system that we use over here is the cooling system another thing that we can conclude is that excessive stress or thermal heating or thermal stresses are generated in the combustion chamber parts at very very high temperatures so we can enumerate certain reasons for which the engine cooling system might be used and they are displayed over here it prevents the overheating of the engine and overheating is because of the excess heat which is generated in the engine also the peak temperatures which exceed the melting point of the metal as we have already seen that the metal they might lose their characteristics and significantly change their behavior when they are exposed to continuous high temperatures. Also we have already seen and discussed that the cooling system it will remove the excessive heat. Some, some other functions that the cooling system might achieve is it will help the engine to warm up in a cool weather condition. However, we say that an engine which is running at a lower temperature is less efficient because the combustion chamber walls when they are at lower temperatures the fuel which has vaporized it tends to recondense when it comes in the contact with the cold combustion chamber walls. Also, we might find that when the running temperature of the engine is low corrosive compounds tend to get formed inside it okay now this pie chart it shows us what amount of heat is carried by which section in the engine the major amount of heat which is carried away is by the cooling water and the air and cooling oil that is used then again an equivalent amount of heat might be available in the exhaust gas then the engine friction then you have powertrain and the vehicle so propelling the vehicle so this is the heat which is used in different sections of the operations of an IC engine okay 
Now let us go on a bit further and see. There are two extreme cases. If the engine is running at a very very high temperature and also if it is running at a cold temperature. Okay, so we will see in each case what are the disadvantages. If the engine is running at a high temperature, then pre-ignition of the fuel might take place. By pre-ignition, we mean that even before the spark is passed, since the combustion chamber walls are at a higher temperature, the walls are at a higher temperature, the spark plug is at a higher temperature, then the fuel which has vaporized, it will ignite even before the spark has been passed. Then again, you have the phenomena of knocking and detonation. Even before the flame has moved to consume the charge, in case of a SI engine, the charge will auto ignite and thereby it will result in a flame which is propagating in an opposite direction than that from which has generated from the spark plug. This will result in detonation and knocking. Then fatigue loading of engine components will take place wherein you can find pistons they have burnt holes through. The burnt and bent valves are also a result of overheating of the engine. Also, lubrication system might break down completely. By breaking down of the lubrication system, we mean that whatever lubricant and cooling oil is present, that oil will break down or it will start to vaporize at elevated temperatures. Then scoring of the piston and the sleeves. Scoring means the piston has suffered excessive wearing. Also, warping and fracture of the components. Warping means the we have already discussed that the valve they get bent when they are continuously exposed to elevated temperature and also you might find that some components they have developed cracks due to excessive fatigue and thermal loading which we call which might we might call as fracture of the ice engine components now let us see the next extreme if the engine is running too cold unnecessary wear will take place this will be because the lubricant oil will not flow at very very low temperatures and hence proper lubrication will not be achieved which ultimately leads to unnecessary wear and tear in the engine then poor fuel economy why is this because incomplete combustion takes place and further when the engine is running too cold then the chances of the fuel being vaporized and resulting in proper combustion are low hence to sustain the combustion and keep the engine running we need to successively keep on supplying a rich mixture hence we say that poor fuel economy is a major disadvantage when the engine is running at low temperatures or when the engine is running too cold and more energy is transferred out of the cylinder that is even the useful amount of heat is extracted out from the combustion chamber then by extension energy is wasted and it is not available to develop proper work or power then again one more point that promotes corrosive conditions in the engine that is the water of combustion it will react with sulfur oxide in the exhaust we all know that when combustion of a hydrocarbon fuel takes place the major byproducts formed are co2 and h2o so this h2o that is formed if there are any sulfur oxides present in the exhaust gases then at lower temperature this will react with them and create acids which will corrode the engine again by extension the same point Acids are formed, allow water and sludge to accumulate in the crack case and over time diluting of the fuel oil, the fuel will dilute the oil and also normally lighter volatile fuel will evaporate as the temperature rises but it is not always the case that a highly volatile fuel is used in the fuel in the hydrocarbon. It is made up of heavy ends as well as light ends. Heavy ends, they have a higher molecular weight which tend to vaporize at a higher temperature whereas light ends they have a lower molecular weight which tend to vaporize at lower temperature so if the fuel has only higher ends or a predominant composition of higher end hydrocarbons then at lower temperature this fuel will not vaporize properly okay so these are the advantages or disadvantages or the two extremities 
at which the engine cooling system will function that is the engine should not run at a higher temperature excessively and it should also not run at a lower temperature thank you very much